Hi guys and welcome back to another Dolch Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 22 and today we're going to be using Pekka Banyaya, our most recent Grand Prix winner in MotoGP in real life and he's going to be here in the Tuscan Hills at the fantastic circuit of Mugello. So going into the first corner, I'm going to be leaving this on power setting 1. We're also going to be doing a very little small amount of discussion regarding the MotoGP race that just, just occurred on Sunday for the Italian Grand Prix and of course going to be messing around with the AI but I've got to say I'm still frustrated with the lack of uh, difficulty in MotoGP 22. The AI are just honestly so weak that I'm dropping everything down, I'm uh, considering turning electronics off, maybe using the ride height device more since it slows you down and even using power setting 1 for the most of my races from now on. But that will not deter us from having a good race here today. So going into Savelli then for the very first time and asking, we'll be approaching into Arabiata 1 onto the right-hand side of the Ducati, right on the cusp now of getting through onto Kaki Nakagami. Now, of course, Nakagami and Rins, if you've heard of their little spat recently, that uh, concluded in Mugello, or at least uh, erupted in Mugello, let's say, as uh, the two riders came together. I do believe here in turn 11 for Palaggio, as well, Marquez gets a bit of a kick up the wazoo there from Pekka Banyaya. Now, of course, Nakagami and Rins have different opinions of the circumstance of the crash. To my opinion, it did look a little bit more like a racing incident and nothing should be done about it. But Alex Rins has said that Takanaki Nakagami is a rather aggressive rider. Now, it's not something I've ever heard before that Nakagami is an aggressive rider, but hey-ho, I know Taka is uh, up against it at the minute because, of course, Ayagora doing excellent in Moto2. Samkir Chandra does also have a little bit of a chance of getting into the LCR Idemitsu Honda team, so we'll see what happens next season. But we do fly past the LCR man of, Mar of uh, Alex Marquez. Mark Marquez is younger brother, of course, as we charge down into San Donato for the second time of asking right behind the Repsol Honda man, who is actually currently looking for a seat next season. It's Paul Spargo. I do suspect we may see him on possibly... Aprilia, possibly a satellite Aprilia with, uh, with the RNF satellite team. So we'll see what happens, but I do suspect that Hollis Barger will be staying within MotoGP. I just don't know exactly where the uh, the former world champion or former Moto2 world champion will end up towards the start of next season. But coming out of Borgo San Lorenzo for turn five, I would love to have a good move into Casanova and Savelli. And there it is around the outside is Casanova. Do we have the line? Not quite. The uh, two Aspargo brothers, of course, doing a fantastic job up into fourth and fifth place, respectively. Alex Aspargo is on the podium once again in the real Grand Prix. He'll be looking to better that here today. He's currently in third position with Jorge Martin having a fantastic Grand Prix as of yet. But Banya up in the inside of Paul Aspargo, almost running over his foot there. Is there uh, going into Scarpa? It's going to get a little bit close, and we just have to yield the position ever so slightly. It's going into Palaggio. Paul Aspargo certainly had the inside line, but speaking about the inside line, Pecco goes for it again, going into Garantayo, into turn 12, we'll get onto the right hand side of the Ducati once more. Now looking into the bottom right corner of your screen, I am using a soft option front and a medium rear. The majority of the riders on the grid chose hard option tyres and this was the recommended tyre settings, it would have been the medium front with the hard rear, but I quite like using the soft front because it does make things a little bit more difficult towards the end of the Grand Prix because the, the soft option tyres are on the limit and it does make it a little bit more entertaining towards the end. So fastest man on track on right now on lap 3, Pekka Banyai with a 146.438 and we have really closed in on the, um, the, the newly found purple patch of Alicia Sparga. Of course the incredible season he's having so far, the best in MotoGP has ever, ever, ever had and to be honest with you, Quite possibly the best season he's ever had in any of the categories, from 125 all the way up to Moto 2, and then into Moto GP, of course. But into the left hand side, into Matarasi for turn 4, then into turn 5 for Borgo San Lorenzo. We are gaining time in Lace Spargo, but not quite close enough yet, although we do close in very well into Casanova. We might have that patented lunge going into Savelli, we certainly do. Small amount of contact over the inside of Alicia Spargo, ladies and gentlemen. There's your thumbnail right there. I love a good move going into that section of track. It's just absolutely iconic in getting it done here today for this video with the Italian rider and the Italian bike in the Italian GP is absolutely brilliant. But now to the right hand side for Scarperia, running a little bit too deep and you will notice that the front tyre is getting a little bit worn down now, especially the right hand side of that front soft. 
not looking too strong at this point in the race. You can see it really depreciating and degrading as we go into turn 12 there. A very hard braking zone and trail braking a long time into 12th corner of Mugello. So we've got to be very careful in the next couple of laps because we, of course, are approaching lap number four as we get really close to the rear of Alex Rins. A little bit more rear brake there from Pecco Bagnaia. Just to slow the Ducati down ever so slightly as Jorge Martin, your current race leader, has a good old look over his shoulder. Now, speaking of race leaders, how about Marco Bezzecchi and Fabio Di Giantonio? Two riders have never led a MotoGP race, and in their rookie seasons, respectively, they've done it. And look at that up in the inside. Pecco Bagnaia goes up the inside of Alex Rins into San Donato on the fourth lap, and is looking menacing here in the Mugello Grand Prix in the Tuscan Hills. Pecco Bagnaia is desperate for it. But let me tell you guys, I've got to bring it up again. Luca Marini as well also needs a shout out. Wasn't a race leader, but he was still right up there in the thick of things and ready for a fight. We knew that once Pecco Bagnaia was going to get to the front, it was probably going to be curtains, and it certainly was. Didn't expect Fabio Quattararo to pull off some incredible moves throughout the Grand Prix. But I tell you what, Bezzecchi really impressed me. I was already a massive fan of Bezzecchi, but I tell you what, enough about that for now. Up on the inside into Savelli. Do we take Quattararo? It's going to be super close on the, uh, the sort of exchange of battle on the approach to Arabiata 1, but we do get the position ahead of Fabio Quattararo as Pecco Bagnaia now seeks his fortune and fame here in Mugello. Does he go up the inside of Jorge Martin? A little bit of a bump there in the middle of the circuit as we now really get close to the young Spaniard. Possible teammate for next year, uh, next season for Pecco Bagnaia? Maybe, but it certainly looks like the beast will be... Uh, Pe partnering up that uh, factory Ducati with Pecco Bagnaia, but yes, once again, I've got to get back to it and speak about Marco Bezzecchi, Fabio Di Giantonio and Luca Marini, three riders that I honestly didn't see being that far up there. I thought Bezzecchi would have a good weekend, and I know Luca likes Mugello, so I thought maybe top ten for them both, but seeing them up there ready and willing and able to fight for not only a podium, but a potential chance of a race victory. It was awesome to watch and we need more races like that where we have riders who aren't currently leading the championship or currently leading races are going to be up there and fighting for it for the best time. But up on the inside we'll go with a look at the speed of the Ducati and the power we had going onto the brakes into San Donato into turn one for the penultimate time. We do now have the lead ahead of Jorge Martin as we now go to the left hand side for Luco but I've got to be honest with you. That front tyre is feeling very, very squirmish now. It doesn't feel good whatsoever. I'm really struggling on the right-hand side of the tyre, but we'll try and get into it once again and get the feeling back because the, since the previous lap, the tyres feel like they've just completely dropped off a cliff. I've noticed this a few times now in MotoGP 22. When you get to the stage where the tyres are going wrong, they sort of feel like they're degrading quickly and then when it gets to the point where it's like a couple of more laps to go it just disappears and for some reason they really hit me hard in this one we're still going to be ahead of Jorge Martin for the time being but we've got to make sure we're gentle on the brakes one second down we are right now as we've done some pretty consistent 146s so far now is our chance to try and break away from Martin but also keep the lap times coming but with that tyre it's looking a bit ominous, ladies and gentlemen. It isn't looking too grand. And speaking of grand, we do go wide into Corentai, and we probably will yield the position for now. We lost it temporarily, but we still have it. So Pekka Banyai in the lead, but for how much longer as we get a little bit messy going into Biondetti 2. Give that man a track limit warning, and somehow the game says, nah, you're right, I've got your back. <laughs> Don't know why we didn't get the track limit warning there. As Quattararo is down into Bacini on the penultimate time. It was too much for Fabio Quattro and he's gone down and out of this Grand Prix. What a disaster for the fantastic performance from him in Mugello from just a couple of days ago and of course uh, quoted the best race of his career. He knew how hard it would be to try and fight for the podium but yet he still did it and did one better. He didn't just finish on the podium, he finished in second place and wasn't that far behind your race leader right now and your race winner of the Mugello Grand Prix. But one thing I need to say is Look at the left-hand side of your screen there. Paul Spargo, Alex Marquez, Mark Marquez, and Takaki Nakagami. Four Hondas in the top ten. MotoGP 22. You are playing yourself. That's just not going to happen in 2022. The Honda is not ready yet to be fighting like that. And uh, I'm also a bit concerned and confused because at the previous update it was stated that the riders would be more equivalent to their real-life counterparts. But right now that doesn't look true. 
Jorge Martins having an excellent race and he's struggling in real life. And the four Hondas, as mentioned, don't really belong to be up there right now. Marquez probably, yes, but the others, not sure yet. Another who might be fighting for a top ten, but all of them in the top ten? I'm not sure about that one. Really, really not sure. But on this final lap, we do manage to hold it together as of yet. No mistakes coming our way, but look at the state of that soft option front tyre. That's a blunder if I was really worried about losing or winning this race, but to be honest with you, pretty confident the AI on this game is just not good enough yet. They were great last season, but here they struggle. The first laps, they are absolutely terrible. Now, and speaking of the AI and updates in general, I was told we'd get an update before the end of May, and I'm recording this on the 30th of May, and there's no update yet, so unless it comes tomorrow, it's not going to happen, but never mind about that. Across the line, we will go victorious here in Mugello with your Italian winner, Pecco Bagnaia. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, something a little bit more different and something a little more relaxed for me, and I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, let me know in the comments section down below, hit the like button and consider subscribing for a lot more Dot Trace content. Thanks for watching and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.